So I played Assassin's Creed Revelations in 2022, and this will cap off the Assassin's Creed reviews on the channel, which I started back in 2020. So if you guys wanna hear what I think about any of the mainline Assassin's Creed games, they're on the channel now. With that out of the way, it's time to dive into what I feel is one of the most underappreciated Assassin's Creeds of all time. This video is sponsored by AFK Arena, a classic idle RPG with stunning visuals. And now AFK Arena has a lot more in common with The Witcher 3 than just monsters and magic, because two new heroes, Geralt of Rivia and Yennefer from The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt are joining the game. You can try these two new powerful characters along with a brand new story to experience and explore for free for three days. After that point, you can earn them for free or you can purchase the bundle to claim them. The great thing about AFK Arena is you don't have to spend so much time grinding levels. You can just auto collect whatever you get while you're away, then come back to the game every now and then and find that your team is getting stronger without you. This lets you spend your time exploring the different game modes, PvE stories, dungeons, raid bosses, arena, king towers, and more. AFK Arena has done many collaborations with well-known games and franchises, such as Assassin's Creed, Persona 5, and Overlord. So click the link in the description to get started, play with Geralt of Rivia and Yennefer for three days for free now, and use promo code THEWITCHER3 to receive 1,000 diamonds and more items. And thanks to AFK Arena for sponsoring the video. Now I know, under appreciated and underrated are really overused these days, but Revelations still feels like it deserves that label. I haven't played every single video game franchise on the face of the earth, but in terms of three games starring the same protagonist on the same journey, I don't think I've ever played a better third game in a series. Back in 2011, when Assassin's Creed Revelations came out, people were like, okay, this is still good, but you're doing kind of the same thing. This is the third game in three years starring the same character. We need you to do something new. Ubisoft's response to that was, oh, here's some more multiplayer, building off of Brotherhood's multiplayer. Here's Tower Defense, this wacky new mode that's kind of fun, kind of goofy. Here's the Hookblade. Here's Constantinople. Here's a version of Ezio you've never seen before. While the bones of this game is very much in the mold of Assassin's Creed 2 and Revelations, it's a true sequel in that way, they still offered a bunch of different things to sort of spice up the experience. But really, I think if you were invested in Assassin's Creed, if you loved Ezio and you loved Brotherhood, then this was kind of a no-brainer. You wanted to play Revelations, you wanted to see this story through to the end, and if you had been playing this franchise since the first game in 2007, you really wanted to see how they were tying Altair into this equation. And the result for me is something that I enjoy on the surface. I love this combat, I love seeing mature Ezio, I love seeing him be a mentor, I love this new city, but beneath the surface, you get so much from this narrative. It's truly one of those moments in the Assassin's Creed series that stuck with me the most. If you care about spoilers, please stop watching the video right now. Just click away. Yeah. This scene right here at the end of the game, this just still gives me insane shivers, like goosebumps you would not believe. I heard your name once before, Desmond. A long time ago. Now it lingers in my mind, like an image from an old dream. I do not know where you are, or by what means you can hear me. But I know you are listening. I have lived my life as best I could, not knowing its purpose. But drawn forward like a moth to a distant moon. And here at last, I discover a strange truth. But I am only a conduit for a message my understanding. While I do care about what's happening to Ezio in Constantinople and the Brotherhood and the Templars, this is that rare occasion where the modern day and how it ties into the Animus story is actually front and center, I would say. Like, it's so important that you're thinking more about, you know, the keys to unlock Masyaf and that knowledge that Ezio is looking for, and then the payoff is absolutely massive. While Desmond's journey does continue in Assassin's Creed 3, this really wrapped a bow on Ezio's story and Altair's story to the degree that, yeah, I'll just never forget it. So I guess at the top of this video, I just want you guys to know that's why I hold it in such high regard. It's not necessarily the individual parts, it is the whole. However, this is a review in 2022. So 
How does this game feel now? I think one of the coolest things about going back to old games is being able to play them in really high settings on modern hardware. So being able to play Revelations in 144 hertz, 1440p, it almost unlocks a new way of looking at these games. And Revelations is no different. It is a very kind of drab and moody looking video game, but you guys know me, I'm totally into that. This color palette is probably just brown, gray, and black. I mean, you've got some very muted colors in Constantinople, but at the same time, I love it. It totally works. That's one of the real strengths, I think, of the older games is that they really affected a mood based on their visuals. Nowadays, it's more like, let's make the game as pretty as possible, as photorealistic as possible. With Revelations, it was more of like an art direction approach. They weren't trying to go for photorealism. They were going for something that felt a certain way, and I still feel it. However, what did not age so gracefully is the state of this game. There are so many bugs, and at times it sort of hijacks and ruins the experience. I ran into one myself. My entire save was corrupted because I played the Lost Archives DLC, and that hijacked my save game. That's not an issue that could affect everyone, but there are goofy things like with bombs. Kino on my Discord, for example, pointed out the fact that bombs have this weird classification. They're either high profile or low profile. They're suspicious. They can get you seen when they shouldn't. Basically, stuff is weird in this game, and you will notice it if you play and pay close attention. But when you actually do get to the playing the game part of the experience and it's not disrupted by something, this game is beautiful. It's so fun. It feels like dusting off an old relic that used to make you really happy and realizing, oh yeah, this is still here. When people think of Assassin's Creed games and even Ezio games, Revelations is definitely not the first thing you think of. You think of AC2 or AC Brotherhood. And when you think of what version of Ezio like pops in your head when you hear his name, it's definitely not this one. It may just be the underdog complex that I have, but I've always loved and appreciated this version of Ezio because again, it provides that evolution of a character that I think is pretty rare in video games. It's cool to see origin stories. It's cool to see how people become who they ultimately become, but rarely do we see beyond that. So many Assassin's Creed games are origin stories, so I respect the hell out of the fact that we've been with Ezio literally since birth. We saw him get born. We saw him become an assassin. We saw him at his ultimate peak of badassery, and now we get to see him in his older age still kicking ass. Similar to Brotherhood, we don't have to deal with a prologue. Like, we've already got the dual hidden blades were already there. And Ubisoft was clever in that they kind of fleshed out the, you know, assassin mentor experience really well with the assassins. So you get to actually mentor them, run them through missions, you get to talk to them and even like level them up and choose certain things for them. The feeling you get from finding a recruit and then rising them through the ranks and then, oh, they're like standing beside you as another master assassin. That is such a cool feeling and you even see their name, like Mario or whatever. This seems like just another system that was brought over from Brotherhood, but to me, it feels like it's genuinely fleshed out and Ubisoft did a great job of really kind of surrounding the player with all of these mechanics to make you feel like Mentor Ezio. You also feel that way with the tools in this game. Ezio has a lot of little tricks in his bag and especially with the new bomb crafting system, while it doesn't work perfectly, it allows for like some creative expression. You can mix and match these ingredients to come up with the perfect bomb for whatever situation you need it for. It kind of has that hidden excuse of, you know, you've already seen a lot of these options in combat, so you can't really take away most of them. So we're just going to give you more things to work around with. So the result to me is that there is a combat and, you know, navigation playground with this equipment and these systems that feels very broad. The hook blade is another example of that. You've got the same movement system for the most part. I'm sure there's small little variations that I can't really pinpoint myself. Itself, but the hook blade, it offers a different navigational tool in your toolkit. For example, zipline assassinations, they're just fun. Combat feels very similar, of course, to the first two games, mostly the same to Brotherhood because we've got those chain finishers, but now they made, I, I would call them like more brutal finishers for Ezio's, uh, you know, counter kills. But the same sort of philosophy that I take with Brotherhood applies to Revelations. If they give you options in combat, just because you decide not to use them doesn't mean the game is just easy counter kill, blah, blah, blah. It means you're not experimenting with the tools that you're being given. Shifting gears here for a moment, I think one thing that I really appreciate about Revelations in a lot of these older games is the level, the volume of set piece moments. There are some big blockbuster like chases and sequences that are 
self-contained missions, so you don't have the open world freedom necessarily. But the way they're paced and presented, it's just so different from what we get in modern Assassin's Creed games that, you know, it, it makes me miss the momentum that these old games had. You also get this in the cutscenes, which, dude, the writing in this game is so fantastic. There's so many moments where these characters pop off of the screen because of how they're acted and how they're written. I think I sort of appreciated it when I played it initially, but as I'm, you know, 27 now, I think I more appreciate sort of the slower, more reserved way that this story unfolds and how these characters act. Nobody's like Bartolomeo from, you know, the first two games, who's just bombastic and larger than life, or Cesare, who, while I like Cesare, he's a really good heel, he's also just kind of cartoonish, right? He's kind of a Saturday morning cartoon villain. In Revelations, you get Yusuf, you get Sophia, you get Solomon. In general, I seem to connect with characters who have quieter moments and seem to be more reflective than where, how they are on their sleeve. And this entire series has kind of bounced back and forth. I would say the latter is true about the more recent games, but it's also true about some of the older games. The thing is, with Revelations, everyone is sort of more mature, and I'm into that. Another reason I just love Revelations is something I've mentioned in a lot of my reviews for the older games. It's a city game, man, and the city game is just key. This is one of the smaller maps in the entire series, and one of the most rare moves that you basically never see. This game is a sequel that is actually smaller than the game that preceded it. Constantinople is smaller than Rome. And you know what? I think that's a good thing. I don't think we need our games to be bigger. I think they should be smaller because I think every single corner of the game should be used in a more thoughtful way rather than having large stretches that are just kind of empty. And sometimes it makes sense, like the deserts in Origins. That is such an awesome feeling. The oceans in Odyssey, I think those are also really cool. But at the same time, we have a lot of empty space that's not being used. I just feel like it's wasted. City games don't have that problem and Constantinople is no different. What you get in return is very detailed areas. I mean, it's impossible to find any square inch of this city that isn't like really well detailed and really cool to look at. I know that Constantinople is not really geographically that close to Baghdad, but we're going to get similar vibes, I think, in terms of how the world feels in Mirage if things go right, you know? I'll cross my fingers on that. What a city game means for Assassin's Creed is more parkour, more opportunities for the notoriety gameplay loop where you get seen, then you run away, then you hide, and then you're clear. These are classic concepts that, yeah, they've, they've just been forgotten in more recent games because the franchise has evolved. But I can't tell you how annoying it is to sometimes see people go out and sort of do some revisionist history and say this was never good in the first place, you know? Too much tailing mission too much, uh, you know, riot, run and hide and go seek. And that was never that fun. I couldn't disagree more. I, I think it's a gameplay concept that still holds up, especially if you go back to these old games and play them again. Revelations is just one of those games that offers that. And it's just as good as it is in the other games. We get an extra added wrinkle though with Revelations because you've got a city, Constantinople, that's being shared. So you've got the Ottomans and the Byzantines. They both are sort of a central authority. So you can get in trouble with both of them and you can pit them against each other. So there's sort of like some crowd control dynamics. There's some push and pull, some cause and effect. And again, that is so awesome. It's just a really fun mechanic. It allows you to play around with the game and see how the AI reacts. City games also inherently give you more opportunities for parkour. That's just how the city is set up. The buildings are close together. There's very few, like very wide streets. So that means you could probably go from one end of the map to the other end without touching the ground. That's a process aspect that I personally prefer because I think it's more fun navigationally moment to moment. You're making these little decisions on how to go from A to B to C and it adds an element of verticality to combat. You can get above people and assassinate them from above in a lot more places than you can in modern games. So you get all of that, all that good, rich, old school game stuff from Revelations. To sum up my feelings on Revelations, it's such a neat bow on the first four games. It delivers so much in the story department for people that consider themselves fans of these characters and the series. The emotional payoff you get from the end of Revelations, I think is possibly more powerful than anything you get in Two or Brotherhood. I know some people will disagree with me there, but I just think the way it brings it all together is beautiful. Revelations outside of people who 
who consider themselves fans probably looks like another sequel at, you know, three Ezio games in three years. The third one, really? How much different could it really be? If you take the time to peel back those layers, I think you do discover that this is a game that has value that in some ways definitely surpasses the other three games. That's why I put it as number five in my top Assassin's Creed games video. I mean, it really does hold that special place for me because of the emotional weight and also because of Mentor Ezio. I love this guy. All right, people, that is it for the So I Played AC Blank in Blank series on the channel. It's been going for two and a half years, which is crazy to think about. I've been really slow about this. The, the video that you're watching right now is not really a video that I make anymore on the channel. We've kind of shifted. We're doing more of the live, you know, let's play type of video. And that's something I've been having a blast with. So that's not stopping anytime soon, but it feels a little, uh, you know, bittersweet. I know this is a bit of a stretch, but this kind of feels like revelations. It feels like a closing chapter for the channel where, you know, we talk a ton about Assassin's Creed. Things have changed and I really like where we are. And I'm also cautiously optimistic on AC Mirage. We'll see how it turns out. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel and this series over the years. It's been a blast uh, interacting with the Assassin's Creed community. So I really want to thank you guys. And don't forget, you can download AFK Arena now using the link in the description below to play with Geralt of Rivia and Yennefer for free for three days. And and use promo code the witcher 3 to receive 1000 diamonds and more items and if you enjoyed this video remember to hit that like button i'd really appreciate it also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this and hit that bell so you get notified whenever i upload thank you guys so much for watching and i'll talk to you next time